Music is a language. It speaks to sort of an invisible part of us that moves the physical part of us. I became a jazz musician based on the fact that there was total freedom. It was like life to me, unlimited. Any kind of groove under the sun. You heard Latin grooves, you heard that serious swing, bebop. Then you hear the slow ballad. You heard them get funky a little bit too, you know. And then sometimes they would rock out on it as well. It was everything. So I said, this is freedom right here. And I started learning West Montgomery solos and that's what showed me the truth. I had been playing Jimi Hendrix, Ernie Isley, Peter Frampton, you know. But then when I went to West, my father said, man, you serious about the guitar? He said, okay, come to the basement and check this out. And he put on West Montgomery, man. West was playing so intelligently, crisp, clear. He was just expressing, it was like a conversation that was um, between scientists, <laughs> you know, something like that. And I said, man, I really want to do that. And first of all, what is that he's doing? What is that? What is that sound? I couldn't get that sound for, for save my life. So that drew me in right there. But it's the freedom of jazz. It's the freedom of that improvisational element. The freedom of that, I can wear any pair of clothes, whatever color I want to wear. Chords, right? Harmonies and melodies. They can move any kind of way they want to move, you know? Anyway, I can make it feel good. It's a beautiful thing. For me, writing music and playing music, they go hand in hand. The way I write is, is basically two elements in this framework, inspiration and craftsmanship. You get inspired, man. You get this great thing, you get this great thing, and then you get into it, and all of a sudden, <laughs> you know, the bubbles bursted. You're back on earth again. You sit there with your, your instrument and your pad and you're going, okay, what happens next? You're not in that creative void anymore giving you this idea. So the inspiration has done its part. Now I got this spark and I want to turn it into a flame and I want to cook something with it. So I'll take that inspiration joint and then I'll go into my craftsman, craftsmanship mode and I'll think about where this is leading me, and I'll follow it based on what I know about the craft. You know, I'll know, I've, I've heard familiar color changes, I've heard familiar um, uh, sections and, and forms, so I'll, I'll open myself up to all that and say, what is this trying to say? What color you want to wear today, sweetheart? Oh, you want some blue pants? Okay, you want a haircut? You know what I'm saying? And, and that idea, that spark, that inspirational thing, then it's the craftsman in there going, okay, so you know, this is too, so I'll take an inch off of it, add an inch to it, turn left here, turn right there, and you sit back and you listen to it. And then the inspiration will come back in and say, yes or no. Because <laughs> it just doesn't marry with the inspiration. And, you know, so really it's inspiration and craftsmanship. This is how I get through my writing process. Actually, I heard my brother playing first. And my brother was just playing, and my mother let him set up in the living room. He and my cousin, a bass player, a drummer. And man, all the kids from the street was down there looking in the windows and, you know, trying to get in the house and on the porch and everything. It was just this wonderful air that they brought by playing live music there for the neighborhood, so to speak. I was stuck. I was eight years old. I was stuck. I sat on the couch and I watched that, and I didn't really pick up that he played guitar. See, true share the room. That blew my mind. I wanted to play guitar then. I was stuck. They tore down, the gig was over. I was still sitting there, thinking about this, what I just seen. 
He leaves, he goes out, hangs out with his friends. Uh, he's a teenager then, so he did that a lot. I sneak into his room and play his guitar. I'm saying, man, you won't catch me, you won't catch me. I do this for about a year. He comes in, he catches me one night. <laughs> I'm sitting there with his guitar, oh, busted. And he comes in, he says, wow. I said, man, I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't heard it or nothing, I just wanted to, he said, I didn't know you wanted to play it. Play me something. I was working on some Jimi Hendrix from the band of Gypsies, trying to learn that. I played a little bit for him and he says, wow. He said, man, you play it any time you want to play it. And he went on the bed. It was no big deal. So that was my first influence, right? I started picking up on everything. Stuff caught my ear. Groups like Earth, Wind & Fire because they had a range of instruments. You heard voices, you heard percussion, you heard two guitar players, you heard keyboards and then synthesizers and it was just this array of flavors and colors, and rhythms and grooves. I really took to that Earth, Wind & Fire group. But overall, man, it was, it was the influence of Jimi Hendrix, Wes Montgomery, and George Benson. And man, it was just like guitar spoke to me. I heard it in the gospel realm, I heard it in the country realm, the rock, the R&B, the funk, the jazz, guitar was everywhere. And it could be lead in all those places. I love it so much, dude. I, I will be doing this until um, I'm not here anymore. Then I'm gonna come back and do it some more. <laughs> yeah.